Good day to everyone and warm welcome to this presentation. FCC main blower and weight gas compressor UCP testing using dynamic modeling. My name is Vaya Vatician and I am the managing director of VVNX GmbH. And we will speak today and have some discussions about the FCC main blower and weight gas compressor UCP testing using dynamic modeling and using the same dynamic modeling for combat or prediction of compressor falling. Our company, Vivinex GmbH, was founded in Germany about 20 years ago. And primarily our focus was on vendor and site inspection, overall QA, QC activities. Of course, our projects include also risk-based inspections, vendor expediting, supplier audits, project management, consulting, and certification. Our headquarters are in Mönchengladbach, Germany. We have operating offices in St. Petersburg, Russia, and Yerevan, Armenia. We have qualified personnel in 30 countries throughout Europe, Middle East, and CIS countries. We have more than 20 years of experience in oil and gas, petrochemical, and power generation industries, and been involved in more than 30 major projects worldwide. Today, discussion topics. Dynamic modeling of compressor or air blower based on a real testing data. Modeling levels. FCCU main blower and weight gas compressor UCP testing using dynamic modeling. And FCCU weight gas compressor falling prediction. We will have about 30 to 35 minutes of presentation and we'll leave the rest uh, for Q&A session. UCP testing challenges prior to delivery. Testing of the UCP panel prior to delivery or even after delivery is a big challenge. And saying that, these are several components and several causes why it's not that easy to test the UCP panel before delivery at the vendor premises. First of all, all tests are in simulation mode. It never happens, at least I cannot recall that, when you have a real compressor or blower directly connected to UCP panel at vendor premises when you can test your control panel together with compressor. And secondly, this is not a very smart idea to test a control panel system with a real compressor. That's why all tests and software simulation hardware verifications are done on a simulation mode. Of course, you can simulate and you can connect as much as input and answer sigma, uh, signals you want to UCP panel, but modeling or simulation, simulating the exact behavior of the compressor or blower requires some more attention to all the aspects. Furthermore, the actual performance curves play also a very important role. The real tested compressor has a different performance curve, even different performance map as the initial calculated one. Also, the dynamic behavior of the compressor is different from the calculated one or designed one. And this cannot be fully implemented or tested, verified during the UCP testing as well. And the last but not least, which is very important, 
the search control routine and process control routines of the UCP cannot be tested at uh, simulation more than the vendor premises uh, as because the compressor or blower are not physically there. Uh, so just uh, for the previous point, to, to demonstrate the previous point, uh, these are the performance map of the really tested blower. And uh, you see how much the tested performance curve differ from the calculated one. You can see that basically the performance data, which was recorded at 70 degrees of inlet gateway position is more close to the 60 degrees what was calculated. And the other thing is that measured surge line is quite different from the calculated one. Additionally, IGV limit settings are different from the calculated one. All these are creating some sort of difficulties during the testing of the panel together with the compressor on site or more fine or more precise adjusting of the control routine. So uh, dynamic modeling approach, what we use for that? We use actual tested performance data of the compressor or blower, entire performance envelope, adding the polytrophic efficiency onto that. And this map is used for the static modeling of the compressor or blower. We use also rundown curve for the dynamic component uh, to the model. Additionally, the dynamic behavior of the compressor or blower during the changes of the inlet gateway in position are also implemented on a model. And why mainly the rundown curve? Because in our experience, rundown characteristics are much more critical rather than the run-up characteristic, characteristics, as the run-up sequence is very well and very detailed controlled and interlocked in a control routine, in a control software, and very well controlled during the startup of the compressor and blower. And it is very important to check uh, also the rundown behavior of the compressor during the emergency shutdown cases. And that's why we use mainly rundown component for the modeling, adding uh, the uh, response of the compressor blower to the changes of the inlet gateway position. So uh, components or uh, the, uh, the design of the model. This is a general arrangement of the model and the model has three components, compressor or blower, anti-surge valve and discharge piping. With all these three components, uh, we were able to fully model compressor or blower. Of course, it is not necessary to use always all these three components. In case that design shows uh, that the discharge piping has no much dynamic influence on the compressor performance, then of course it is possible to exclude uh, discharge piping from the modeling. And also it is possible not to use anti-surge valve and use pure compressor for the model and checking of the UCP control routine. As an input parameter uh, to the model, uh, we use inlet pressure, inlet temperature, set point and IGV position. 
using these parameters, it is possible to connect a model to UCP panel and simulate all those parameters directly from the UCP panel or use additional input output board and simulate uh, those signals from the uh, from the input output board and double check those signals on a UCP. Whatever configuration is easy for the tester, it can be used. And as an output parameter, uh, which is coming back or reading back from the model, the outlet temperature, discharge pressure, and discharge uh, flow. And key advantages of the model. First of all, it's very important uh, that you can test and check the emergency shutdown behavior of the entire system. Not only compressor or blower, but also the entire surge valve or entire surge flap, or even in connection with discharge piping. It is possible to check the process control routine, entire surge controller, routine and very important fine adjustment of the protection system usually protection system has not only an anti-surge or blow off valves in some cases this system has also some precise adjustment and using this modeling is very easy to find adjust for example the behavior of valve jump or some more precise control of the entire search routine. So, and uh, here I would like to share with you some case study what we did at one of the European manufacturer of the FCCU main blower. Simulation was done uh, compressor and anti surge valve combination. Dynamic behavior was implemented based on the rundown curve and blower reaction and blower behavior to the change of the inlet gateway position. First of all, we used uh, the complete tested performance envelope. This graph shows uh, the uh, rated point of the blower and uh, two extreme working position from the envelope. The position at 70 degrees of the inlet gateway position and also minus 15 degrees of the inlet gateway position. All this information, which is the standard information, what you get after the performance testing of the blower or compressor is used for uh, this calculation and modeling. Here you see two performance curves. One is the red one, which is calculated one, and uh, the black one, which was the tested one. And of course, you could see here as well that uh, calculated and designed one is quite different from the actual tested one. To have the modeling more unique and uh, more universal in that respect, we used uh, uh, not the actual data or actual values from the a flow and the supplied head, but zero to 100% scaling of the input and output parameters. And of course, we have a very important limitation on that discharge pressure, which is somewhere 60 to 63% of the entire range of discharge pressure. This limitation is uh, from the process control. We tested uh, the system in 
two different extreme positions. One is the low temperature mode and other one is the rated mode. These two operating positions are quite far from each other in respect to supplied flow and discharge pressure. The test arrangement uh, was a blower with anti-surge valve. We did not use the discharge piping as uh, this piping configuration did not have much influence on a process dynamic behavior for this particular case study. As an input parameter, we used inlet pressure, inlet temperature, set point in regards uh, to output pressure and flow and IGV positions. Those information are supplied for UCP and as a output parameter, we used outlet temperature, discharge pressure, discharge flow, and also entire surge valve position. So uh, here there are two very interesting screenshots for a low temperature operating mode. And uh, uh, this is actual uh, screenshot uh, from the UCP control panel when we get the readback information from the model. <clears throat> Unfortunately, for the low temperature modeling case and low temperature mode, we were not able to test the compressor at the low temperature, which is around 21 degrees minus Celsius. So we used for this case calculated map for that. The left side screenshot uh, shows the compressor at the starting, uh, starting stage. As I mentioned before, the startup sequence is usually very well controlled and very well arranged to avoid overloading of the compressor or blower during the startup. For uh, this particular arrangement of unit control panel, during the startup sequence, UCP software drives the blower at low load mode, automatically closing inlet gate vents to maximum closed position. This is implemented for a simple reason, not to overload the compressor blower during the startup. At this stage, uh, the blower runs at minimum flow and discharge pressure. Input variables from the unit control system are inlet pressure and inlet temperature, AGV set point. Position of a IGV is more or less close to the full close position at uh, minus seven, at uh, 70 degrees the manipulated value in this case is a set point uh, from the uh, control system, position of the inlet gateway. The second screenshot shows actually the system after stabilization at low temperature mode. The process value is a readback from the model, the outlet pressure flow and discharge temperature reference to the output temperature of minus 21 C. This screenshot shows the UCP control screen after stabilizing of the model. Dynamic components are also implemented and taken into account. This takes two to three minutes approximately for stabilized situation when the app, app output value of the process is fairly close to the set point and the position of the inlet gateway is fairly close to the set point. 
They show that uh, modeling works pre pretty precise on that respect. Of course, the 100% precise dynamics are not there as the modeling is done based mainly on the rundown curve and reaction of the blower to the change of the IGV position. The same testing we did on a rated mode. The starting point is nearly uh, the same like for the low temperature mode as the startup protection routine from unit control panel again drives the system to low load mode with maximum close position of the inlet gateway. Only the difference is the set point. The initial position of the IGV is more or less the same like at low temperature mode. For maximum rated mode, it took approximately four to five minutes uh, to stabilize the process. Again, this is based on a dynamic reaction of the blower onto changes of the inlet gateway position which was obtained during the real testing of the blower. And these are the two output values from the model, which is the process variable, and again, the fairly close to the set point. And a position of the inlet gateway is a readback value, which is also, as you could see, is very, very close to the set point from the unit control panel. And uh, two additional very important sim uh, situations which we were able to simulate and test using our model is the emergency shutdown. During the shutdown, it is very important to check how the control routine is reacting. For this test, we perform two checks, one with anti-surge valve and one without anti-surge valve. You can see the reaction of the anti-surge controller from UCP is working very well. And even during the operation with anti-surge valve while the operating point of the blower does not reach the control line. This is uh, the black line which shows that uh, during the shutdown, uh, the modeling of the blower using the dynamic model shows the movement of the performance point of the blower down but not touching uh, the uh, control line of the compressor. And uh, this is very close uh, to the real behavior of the compressor. As <clears throat> no engagement or no influence from anti-surge controller or anti-surge valve is required. Uh, so this is a screenshot from UCP, uh, UCP control panel, and you could see also here that there is no much influence is required from the anti-surge valve, anti-surge valve uh, controller, which is actually stays at the fully closed position. And the same test we did for an emergency shutdown case, simulating emergency shutdown at a rated mode. Here the behavior is less critical. As you could see, even without anti-surge valve engagement, the operating point of the model doesn't go even close to the surge line. So this is uh, the black line uh, is a situation when we disconnected on a model, the anti-surge valve, 
And the second one is weak anti-surge valve. So basically both cases are very uh, quite far from the surge line and also touching very minor areas, the control routine. So this shows that there is no engagement of UCP control panel is or UCP entire search control routine is required. And this is a screenshot uh, from the unit control panel and they show that no engage again no engagement of the anti search valve or anti search control routine is required. So that was the uh, first part of presentation about uh, the modeling, dynamic modeling for the testing of the UCP panel. And uh, same model, but not fully on dynamic mode, only the static component of the model we used for the combat or prediction of the weight gas compressor falling. Here you can see uh, the photos which show the drastic falling of the compressor in different areas. Regardless uh, where the falling occurs on an interstage passes, on a impellers, on a labyrinth, all these for all those fallings have one thing common. They reduce the performance of the compressor, uh, decreasing the supplied head and the flow. So basically due to, uh, due to falling compressor delivers less flow and less head. And here, for example, uh, on this graph, uh, uh, we showed the movement of the entire performance map towards the less head and less flow. On fault conditions, uh, both parameters, supplied head and supplied flow are reduced. And this movement of the operating point to the entire or the entire operating envelope of the compressor has two, compon has two components. One is the flow reduction and other one is the head or the shaft pressure reduction. These two components are used in a model to predict or to adjust also in some stages the behavior of the control routine as well as the, uh, for the prediction of the situation of the compressor after cer a certain period of time. And uh, this is actually an arrangement of the system for a prediction of the falling. The model is the only compressor or blower without any further components anti-surge valve or discharge piping and also without dynamic component. As an input parameter, uh, we use new performance map or different measuring point of the operating data of the compressor. And as an output, value we have either adaptive control line if uh, it is necessary to use the adaptive control line or falling level prediction and uh, output parameters are based on a prediction which is done inside the model of the falling condition or falling parameters of the compressor. Uh, so this graph shows the using the modeling and drawing uh, the new so-called adaptive control line. 
In some cases, after several months or even a year of operation, the change of the efficiency and the movement of operating map or operating envelope of the compressor is that drastic. But new surge line goes behind the previous or original clean control line. This will run into the situation when for uh, some emergency shutdowns or some other changes on the discharge side on a process side of the compressor, uh, the operating point uh, goes behind uh, the new surge line without getting uh, any response from the control routine as the previous clean control line is behind uh, the new fault condition surge line. And uh, what can be done to have this situation corrected? Based on a movement or changes on a flow at the several position, additionally also calculating the actual efficiency of the compressor, the new so-called adaptive control line can be drawn, which is seen in this case on a green fold color. It will be still, uh, the surge line will be still behind, uh, behind the new fold control line, and this will protect uh, the compressor for the faulty operation. And in a prediction model as an input parameter, we use um, a new measure TED at fault condition, target time or efficiency. And the model allows two ways of judging of the expected efficiency over the time due, due to falling or the actual predicted time when the efficiency will drop down to the certain level. So uh, this kind of judgment has two reasons. Of course, cleaning, shutting down and uh, cleaning of the compressor after a certain period of time is very, very costly exercise which reaches six to seven digit value when compressor needs to be shut down, including the entire FCCU unit for the closing or for the cleaning of the compressor. Even though nowadays there are possibilities for the online flashing or cleaning, but this, of course, needs also the precise planning not to have online flashing too often, often, which will increase the costs and uh, we the too late uh, when the online flashing does not help that much to clean the compressor from falling condition. That's why we have a system to target the time when uh, the compressor will reach this certain reduced efficiency. This will allow the operator to dedicate a certain time when the online cleaning can be done. This will, of course, reduce the OPEX cost due to falling of the compressor. And uh, I would like to share uh, some all the case study what we did at one installed compressor also in Europe with the falling condition. This one we took the measurement of the uh, weight gas compressor over the period of time when you could see that the efficiency of the compressor reduces drastically from around 90% to very close to 65%. Uh, 
And these are the data which show the trend of the efficiency reduction. We use that trend only to compare the calculated data what we had on the, on the compressor model. Uh, we use two different approaches for the prediction. One is the prediction using quick changes of the, uh, of the performance map or performance that data or efficiency of the compressor. The first graph is, uh, looks like quite funny that the trend line, which is the red dotted line, is very far uh, from the actual trend line, but this is used uh, to eliminate the uh, quick change component uh, and have more precise prediction of the compressor situation after a certain period of time. And the second graph is very linear component and we use that uh, to adjust the linear changing component to, uh, for the uh, reduction of the compressor efficiency. Using uh, these two approaches, these two calculation models, uh, one is the nonlinear and one is the linear component, we end up uh, having one end trend line, which is the uh, which is the red dotted line, which uh, we put over uh, the actual trend of the reducing. And of course, uh, you can see here uh, that uh, the calculated trend is very close to a predicted trend of the compressor, which uh, with a very, very slow deviations from the actual trend line. And we did test on that. And it showed that when we have a target time efficiency, and efficiency is only two to three percent maximum over the period of time when it uh, calculates the predicted efficiency of the compressor over the time. And uh, a bit more about three to four weeks prediction of the time when uh, the um, certain efficiency should be reached. So this shows also that even the static model and static uh, modeling work, works very well in regards to prediction of the fault condition of the compressor. So that was all for today's discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. And back to you, Becky.